If you don't have open sexual dialogue with your female partners and you are not more comfortable talking about sex than having it, you got to rethink your sex life. Because the only way it's going to improve, guys, is if you can effectively talk about it. Welcome to What I Love About Sex, where some incredible guests and I, Steph Kanowski, will be bringing you the tools for improving your sex life with topics such as sex issues with your partner, sexual self-confidence, premature ejaculation, sexual shame, masturbation, sharing your fetishes, orgasmic pleasure, and more. Sex is still so taboo, and I personally believe that by improving our understanding and communication skills around sex, we can enhance our own self-pleasure as well as deepening our long-term romantic relationships. So listen in, try to stay open-minded, and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on the What I Love About Sex podcast. Today's episode is about your sexual routine in terms of what you feel you should be doing during sex and how we can squash that so that you stop. (laughs) And I'm going to talk about why this is important to think about and consider. But before I do, if you are getting value from this podcast, please go ahead and leave a rating and review on iTunes and especially Spotify. Um, I'm just recently getting ratings in for Spotify, so it would really be helpful. It takes two seconds to do for either of them just to hit a star rating. Um, And especially if you're getting value from this, that would really help me. And uh, yeah, I would appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So main the main point of today's episode is when you focus on pleasure, you forget about what you should be doing during sex. I'll repeat that again. When you focus on pleasure, you forget about what you should be doing during sex. We've been taught and conditioned to have a certain routine about sex that makes it normal, right? So it it typically goes like, all right, initiate sex, start feeling each other up, have penetration, um, orgasm, Right? If it's good, you're going to orgasm and then clean up. And the end. Cuddle. Some people don't cuddle. Some people do. The end. Right? And it's like we have this script of what we should be doing at certain moments. Also, porn teaches us, um, you know, by watching porn and having the majority of porn have a similar routine, that also teaches us. That, okay, I have to do this, then I have to do that, and uh, yeah, then I do this and it's done. So we get caught up into this routine and because sex, more people are comfortable having sex than they are talking about it, they don't communicate their, their needs around pleasure. They don't even understand, and instead of they, I'll actually say we, we don't even really understand what we want because we don't talk about it. And therefore, we don't feel comfortable exploring it and actually trying it out. Because if you think about having sex with your partner, if you don't have open sexual dialogue with your partner, how are you going to try new things? How are you ever really going to know how they feel about sex if you don't talk about it? Because they're not going to, you know, during the moment of sex, they're most likely, if they're uncomfortable, going to say, no, no, no. Or like, push your head away, push your hand away. And that obviously gives you the clue that no, you don't have consent to do that. But what's the underlying meaning for them pushing you away? Do you know? Do you have the confidence to be able to ask? Most people don't. Most people don't have the confidence to ask. And I'll say men because I'm speaking to men right now. And I'm talking about men, but us as a whole feel this way. Like you men... If you don't have open sexual dialogue with your female partners and you are not more comfortable talking about sex than having it, you got to rethink your sex life because the only way it's going to improve, guys, is if you can effectively talk about it more than you can do it. And I think that's what's frustrating for a lot of men is they want more sex. They want more frequency of sex in their relationships, the majority of you have higher sex drives, want sex more than your partners, are feeling deprived of sex, are feeling more rejected than she is sexually, 
um, that's generally how it goes for the majority. Okay. So with that being said, it's like, all right, I want more sex. And that's, that's cool that you want more sex, but why do you want more sex? Why is that important to you? Why do you think your partner is not willing to give it? And are you willing to have that tough, awkward, uncomfortable conversation with your partner around, hey, like, why are you not wanting sex with me? Is it me? Is it something I do? You know, it is very hard for the male ego to ask questions like this. And when I talk to clients, um, and what, just when men first come to me, actually any men who have concerns, the the initial voicing of the concern says something like, oh, well, you know, I know you like sex and I, you know, is there something, uh, I'm trying to think, I had a specific example, it, it ran away from me, but it's like wording it, you just word it in a way that makes it impossible for her to voice a concern. Like you'll say something like, I know you like sex, so like why, why don't you want it right now? And it's like maybe she's not enjoying sex, maybe she's not liking sex with you. And you have to be open to that answer and not get butthurt over that answer, not get defensive over that answer. Because if that's the truth, the only way you're going to, I mean, the only way you're going to hear the truth is by asking riskier questions that may hurt your ego and may make you feel like you're not great in bed and may make you feel sexually disappointed or disappointed in yourself as a man. Like you may feel that way by asking this. And that's why it's a, that's why it feels like a risky conversation. That's why most people are not comfortable having this conversation because it puts them at risk of hurting their ego or hurting their sexual confidence. You know, but if you are in the place, especially where you're feeling very deprived sexually, then asking your partner or telling your partner, you know, I want us to have sex more instead of asking, hey, why do you think we don't have sex this many times a week? Is there a reason why you think that is? Is there anything that's not working well for you that I'm doing or that you're doing or that we as a team is doing? Like asking these weird, and and I say weird because the majority of people, they are weird, awkward, uncomfortable conversations because as I said, the majority of people are more comfortable having sex than talking about it. So if you're not used to talking to your partner about sex, it's going to feel uncomfortable to have these conversations. But these conversations are the only thing to get you more sex. That's it. You're not going to, she's not going to one day be like, you know what? You've wanted more sex. Let's go. Like you need the communication flow. You need to understand each other. And even if your sex life is great, you know, say that your sex life is great right now. And uh, I got a question the other day, which I really liked. It was when I did a Q&A on Instagram, it was, um, I think it was a cute, I don't know, it was a question from somewhere. And it was, uh, what if your relationship is already, already seems great? Like, how can you make it better or keep it the way it is? And I think that's such a powerful question because people take for granted when their sex life is going really well and they fail to recognize or be aware of why it's going well. Because as humans, when things are great, we don't complain But we also aren't like, wow, this is going great because A, B, and C. We're just like, all right, this is how it should be. Good. (laughs) We just assume things should be great at all areas of our lives. And then when there's a problem, it's like, why is this a problem? (laughs) And we freak out. But and, And that's when we start analyzing, right? But what I often tell my clients is like, all right, cool. Like now things are getting good. Like you had a really great week sexually. Tell me why. Let's rip apart the week in terms of, um, not rip apart. Let's break down the week in terms of what made this week so great sexually and what what led to, to the outcome of sex three times a week when usually you're having it once. What do you think did that? So I'm all about analyzing the good just as well as the bad because if you ever want to get back to that good spot you can have confidence hey I know what I did last time to get here and then it's that much easier when you're in a rut so anyway I feel like I just went off on a tangent there Um, but the point of this is that when you're in a routine of having sex the same way and asking you know asking for sex initiating sex the same exact way and you're getting the same result and you're feeling the same anxiety or you're you're feeling the same confusion or, um, you know, you just don't know if this is the right relationship and it's just this continuous confusion and 
and you're just going about things physically and mentally and emotionally the same way to bring about the same outcome you keep feeling, the answer is in your routine. So you have to look at that. You know, and I say, I mentioned the beginning of the the routine being, all right, initiate sex, uh, foreplay, penetration, clean up, cuddle, right? That's like what we're told to do. That's what people expect sex to be. That's like the sex norm, right? If we were to give it a normal definition of of description. Um, so, so what I chat, and when I see that, like the point of me mentioning that is that there's so much pleasure to be had in different ways sexually and sometimes that pleasure comes or starts with actually most of the time I should say starts with a conversation with your partner about like hey like what have you ever wanted to try that we never tried yet or you know what like being vulnerable here's another example of being vulnerable you know what when we we had sex last time and you were tickling my my upper back, I was so turned on by that. Like that was the biggest turn on. I never knew that was a turn on for me, but that felt so good and it made me so hard. And I loved that. Like I would love, like I would love for you to keep doing that. You know, and things that are a little outside the normalcy of like how you would express yourself or maybe go eat and then see how your partner reacts. You know, because that's not something risky. That's not something too out there where your partner would be like, that's weird. That's fucking weird. like, you know, it's but it's still a vulnerability where it's like, all right, like, why did I get so hard from a tickle on my back? Like, so let me just share that with my partner. And it's about being more open about these things that then allows your partner to be more open and more trusting. All right. And then maybe, you know, maybe it's a little more out of the norm than that. Maybe it's like, you know, when you put your feet on me I didn't realize like how much I was turned on by your feet and like I'm not really a foot guy with anyone else but like with yours like that was so hot or like that made me so hard you know it's like and and even if you are like into everyone's feet and that's just your thing it's like slow like finding these ways to open up about this stuff because when you do you feel that much more comfortable in your sexual body that much more comfortable with your partner and therefore that much more pleasure during sex itself with your partner because you've reached this new point of vulnerability where you can like you know it's like a breath of fresh air you're not holding on to any secrets you're not holding back um and maybe there are instances where you have to hold back because your partner is not giving you consent to move forward with some things that you fantasized about and wanted to make reality and whatnot. And of course, you have to be respectful of that. And sometimes it's about meeting in the middle or finding a way to scratch that itch outside of your relationship. Um, Talk to your partner about it and whatnot. But see, that's what I'm saying. Even when you have these things that you're not getting some consent for with your partner, still have a conversation with your partner so your partner knows where you are sexually. All right. There's so many of us that are afraid to do that. And if you're afraid to talk about things because they seem outside the norm, you will never have a fulfilling sex life. Because I don't think I personally don't think the majority of us are in the norm. You know, like the majority of us don't want to only stick to that structure of sex. Some of us just want to like feel each other up and then that's it and like no penetration. Some people can actually orgasm just by feeling someone up, you know, and we think of that as like, what the fuck? But that's true. Like everybody has these different quirks and these different thoughts and these different things. But if we can't talk about them, we never feel open enough to express them. And if we never express them, we don't feel fully sexually fulfilled. And then we create anxiety around sex. We overthink around sex. We overthink our partner. We resent our partner. We resent ourselves for not talking about it or sharing it with anybody. You know, like all of this stuff builds up when we aren't able to be vulnerable and go outside of the normal structure of what sex has taught us, what society has taught us sex should be. So I want you to think about your shoulds. Like, what do you think you should do? And what is it that you really want to do? What's the difference there? Because I know for you listening to this, you have something that you know will bring you more pleasure, but you're either embarrassed to share it, there's shame around it, and you've, or you never brought it up. Maybe you feel like it's too late to bring up and, and maybe there's just something you would, you would really like to explore, but like, it's a little, 
a little outside that societal structure, right? So you're just, uh, I don't know if it'd be worth it. But you don't know until you try. You know, in the last episode, I shared how I was rubbing my face in my partner's ball sack. And (laughs) I really, and I laugh, not because it's like a weird thing to do, but because the story was so, like, it was such a great moment with me and my partner. And like, it brings me joy to think about that moment. And I also think it's funny because I'm like sharing that with you guys. Um, So my laughter comes from hints of awkwardness, embarrassment, slash good memory. So, so when it comes to like things like that, or um, I shared on another podcast interview when I was with my partner and I was slowly, we were slowly feeling each other in the morning and like getting closer and closer to each other in bed. And like, we didn't even have sex yet at this point. Um, But we literally spent 20 minutes just inching inch by inch getting closer to each other and kind of like in a very sensual, sexual way. And it was so pleasurable. It was so nice. It felt so good. And that was the first time I've ever experienced something that like that was so simple and was almost nothing, but at the same time so passionate and so pleasurable. But it was the simplest act. And it just made me realize like, wow, what other little things like this can bring that much sexual pleasure. Like I didn't even orgasm. Like there was no penetration. There was no touching his dick. There was no touching my genitals. Like it was, it was just skin on skin, like feeling really good. And we're so used to this structure, <clears throat> this structure of what the norm of sex should be and look like, right? And and most people wouldn't think like, oh, foreplay should be you know, 20 minutes of literally just inching inch, inch by inch towards each other. Like nobody has time for that. But that's like, that's, that all comes down to the expectation of sex and how we think about sex. Because we have time, we have 20 minutes to, to lay there with our partner and feel good. And if you don't, maybe reassess your life if you don't got 20 minutes for some pleasure. All right. Because it's good for you. It's good for you and you have the time. And what we have to realize is we prioritize. We we do whatever we prioritize in life. That's it. That's what it all comes down to. If it's a priority, you'll find a way. You know, even really busy parents who have three kids running around will say, you know, I've heard it, will say like we make it a priority, like we make it happen no matter how short, no matter what it involves, it something happens because it's a priority even if it's a couple minutes, right? And that's the thing, like we can find minutes of pleasure here and there. Sex doesn't have to be the same routine every single time. And I think that's important. I think it also stems from masturbation too. Like if you can start masturbating in different ways and realizing that, oh wow, I feel pleasure this way. Or, oh, I tried this toy. This felt really good. Or, oh, you know, I think I mentioned this in the last podcast, like, One guy was like, I mean, I've had multiple guys actually say this, like, oh, I tried some anal stuff and like wasn't into it, but at least I tried it, you know, and and um, there's there's just so much we can play around with with our own bodies and and also just try with our partners. And if something feels good, we can acknowledge that. And just after we have sex, be like, you know, what felt really good today that I never thought would feel that good when you did this. Or like when I did this to you or when I did this to myself, masturbating, can you do this for me? Because it felt really good when I was masturbating. You know, like opening up these conversations because the more we do, the more our, our partner is also comfortable opening up to sharing these things. And especially women will feel more sexually vulnerable the more you emotionally open up to them sexually. So if you can be more vulnerable, she can trust you more and open up to you as well and share what's going on with her. If there is something, if you're feeling sexually rejected right now because she does say no the majority of the time and you feel very rejected by her, but you're not sure why and it feels awkward to ask, you're going to you're going to get to a bad place mentally, you know, because it's like you're constantly going to blame yourself, you're going to feel like shit, you're going to feel like less of a man. But you're not understanding why she's rejecting you. Is it something going on in her body right now? 
Is it an insecurity she has? It has literally nothing to do with you, but it's a major insecurity that's driving her crazy and she can't open up about it or share it. And you're not asking her to open up and share it. You know, there's situations like this that happen all the time because our ego gets in the way and we don't want to feel like something's our fault. We don't feel like we're not sexually attractive enough for our partner. So we fail to ask these risky questions because we don't want to hurt our own ego or confidence. When really, if we just remember, hey, like there are certain things we do to turn on our partner and more than none, otherwise they probably wouldn't be with us, right? Um, and then there are certain things that maybe turn off our partner. And if we're doing something during sex over and over and our partner's not a huge fan of it or gets insecure around it, who's going to call that shit out? If you're more comfortable having sex than you are talking about it, no one's going to call it out. And then it's just going to turn into a constant rejection with sex. Because the elephant in the room is not being talked about it's like this feeling where I don't want sex but you're not understanding why when the why can relieve so much tension and stress and answer so many questions and actually bring sex back into the relationship potentially most of the time right so this was really just a big rant I feel like I run in so many directions, but I hope it was helpful and I hope it made you realize like, wow, yeah, I've been having sex the same way every time. I masturbate the same way every time. And I've always wanted to try this, but I never talked to my partner about it. And I never brought this up after sex. And that little thing that she does that I really like that I hope she does more, I never even asked for it. When why don't I just ask for it? You know, that's what I want you to get used to doing. Let's break outside the societal structure of what normal sex should be and let's find our own norm and let's communicate what that norm is with our partners so that we can feel as confident as possible when we're having sex. Because sex should be about pleasure, not pressure. And communication is a huge step in getting to that point. All right, guys, so I hope this was helpful. If it was, please leave a rating and review on Spotify especially and also iTunes. And uh, thank you so much. All right, have an amazing morning, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I'll talk to you soon. I hope this episode helped you. If it did, I would love for you to leave me an iTunes review. It would mean the world to me. You can also screenshot your favorite episodes and tag me on Instagram at Steph Ganowski. And before I go, remember... Your sex life is as good as you make it out to be. Until next time.